Why, hello there. Jacob. And today, boy, we got a lot to talk about in the world of Minnesota sports. So let's go ahead and actually talk about it. So yeah. Without further ado, let's go ahead and dive right into it. So yeah. And again, sorry for not really making these videos sooner and stuff like that. Let's just say I've kind of had a hectic last few days that I really don't want to get into. But what I will get into instead are the Minnesota Wild and Minnesota Vikings. So let's go ahead and start off with the Minnesota Vikings. So yeah, last night, Minnesota traded for tackle from the Jacksonville Jaguars, Cam Robinson. And if I remember right, Cam Robinson and a 2026 seventh round pick come to the Vikings for a 2026 fifth that could turn into a conditional fourth for the Jags, depending on how many snaps Cam Robinson actually plays. So yeah, the Minnesota Vikings get lot offensive tackle Cam Robinson from the Jacksonville Jaguars and I believe a seventh round pick for... A 2026 conditional fifth that could turn into a fourth depending on how many snaps he plays. So yeah, Cam Robinson was a lifelong Jacksonville Jaguar and, uh, well, actually pretty solid piece and stuff like that. He was there kind of during the uh, Saxonville reign of 2017, you know, when Jacksonville had their miraculous run and stuff like that, but... Just really, I mean, he's been solid and stuff like that, at least kind of, you know, just doesn't really quite seem into it as much this year per se. Granted, Jacksonville hasn't necessarily looked great. Plus, with it being a uh, contract year for Cam Robinson, they figured, well, why don't we just go ahead and cut ties with him, trade him to Minnesota, because, well, odds are he's probably not going to come back next year anyway, so let's at least get something for him. Plus, if you're a Vikings fan... What that indicates to me is that KOC and Quasi are not ready to throw in the towel on this season, nor should you be. I mean, again, you're 5-2. Well, yes, those last two losses left a um, bitter taste in her mouth, especially the Rams' loss. But remember, Puka, Cooper Cup, this is also the same team that just won a Super Bowl a couple years ago. I mean, you know, Sean McVay versus Kevin O'Connell. I... I hate using the word trap game, but at the end of the day, it definitely did kind of feel like more of a trap game than even I was anticipating, but yeah. So yeah, that's the biggest news with the Vikings there. And also to the Minnesota Wild. That is right, ladies and gentlemen. Your Minnesota Wild have finally completed their longest road stretch well, of the season, <laughs> literally, we've only played two home games in the month of October, and we finally have ended the road trip with a 6-1-2 and two record overall, going 5-1-1, one, and one, if I remember right, during that seven-game stretch. Hey, I'll take it. <laughs> I mean, the expectations going into this year being what they were, I mean, we didn't know what to expect. Heinz scheme, you know, Billy Garen, the youth movement, this and that, and the other thing. And what's nice about this, too, is it's not just Caprizov, Zuccarello, you know, in the top line with Boldy and those guys. It's everybody. Like, I mean, you know, the lines actually feel like the designated lines that they should be. I mean, you know, the first line is obviously your sexy line, you know, the line that gets all the attention, does a lot of the glitz and glamour. Your second line is sort of like your bona, you know, like your backup top line with, you know, a little bit of grit, tenacity in there, but can also light it up. Your third line, you know, is sort of that gritty, grimy, not afraid to get into the dirty areas, but yet still has a little bit of offensive potential. And then the fourth line is sort of like your checking line, your, you know, yeah, basically your checking line and your line there where, you know, it's usually where most of the sandpaper and stuff comes from. And for the first time, I think in a long time, 
we actually have the pieces in their proper positions. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. We actually have the top line is our top line. The second line feels like a second line. Granted, Hartman being out for the third line kind of sucks because, again, even when he was in there, I mean, he was great. So it's just, you know, granted, the bottom line, the fourth line, I don't know how I feel about Houston Dienoff being down there with Ogren and those guys. Yakov Trenin, I still don't know how I feel. I mean, granted, he did show up last night, but there's still a few pieces that need to kind of be, you know, ironed out and stuff like that. But, yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, you know, kind of waiting for that road stretch just to kind of see how we did. And, hey, I'd say 5-1-1 one, and one coming out of a long, uh, long road stretch. Really can't complain there. So then we're at home for, I believe, three games next. With the first one being at home against Tampa Bay. If I remember, and I think that's the night we rocked the uh, 78s, which is basically their new alternate jersey they brought back during, first off, the reverse retro era, but then they adopted that full-time as their third jersey last year. And, uh, yeah, no, I think that's pretty much about it for that. But yeah, like I say, just very come on and give my thoughts on the wild here, which again, six one and two in the first eight games. I'll take it. I'll take it all day, every day, because there's some teams that are already in a little bit of hot water. Nashville probably being the biggest one that's the biggest surprise. I would have said Colorado, but I think they're finally back at about five hundred. So I think they're gonna finally start ascending and stuff like that here, but who knows? I mean, we've got a lot of, you know, moving pieces. Obviously, there's still a lot of season to go here. And then, of course, you know, switching it back to the Vikings here, too, coming off of two stinging losses. I mean, that's never fun going through, you know, a losing streak, especially two in a row and two in one week. But, uh, hey, I mean, you know, just chalk it up as a bad week. Everyone has them. And then we get to take on Joe Flacco. And the uh, Indianapolis Colts, which, by the way, real quick here, too. I know I normally don't talk about stuff outside of that, but I feel like uh, it probably should here. The whole Anthony Richardson thing. Oh, buddy. Buddy, buddy, buddy. Buddy, buddy, buddy. Um, yeah. That definitely does not have a boat of confidence now, does it? I mean, again, it seems like... Which is, well, again, like, just make something up here. I mean, I understand, you know, being tired and being, you know, frustrated health. Trust me. <laughs> I understand being tired. <laughs> yeah. So, but, again, you're a starting quarterback in the league. You're about as accurate as me back there, which is saying something. I mean, the dude is like... 45% or 48%. He's below 50-50 on his completions, which if you're a starting quarterback, I mean, hell, even a third-string quarterback, those aren't good numbers, really. But, you know, with all that said, though, is it's just like, what are you doing there, bud? So it'll be interesting to see how the Colts kind of, you know, take that into consideration but i'll probably plan on doing like an actual like preview preview either later today or tomorrow but i just figure i quick come on and give like some updates on like you know the wild and vikings and then we'll do probably the colts update tomorrow i'd say just because well really don't have the greatest lighting in here and i'm you know tired so <laughs> but of course if anything major does happen i'll be sure to let you guys know so, until we meet again, this is Jacob. Have a good day.